Welcome back to Views with Hughes, your agenda free news. I'm Jerome Hughes. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and also click the bell notification so that way you'll be notified of future updates and uploads. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So we got some more um, Rings of Power news right here. Right when you thought that they won't stoop any lower, they go ahead and prove us wrong. All right, so it says here, according to Bonding into Comics, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power actor Lloyd Owen saying Tolkien hasn't fleshed out these characters to the extent that the other characters are. I'm going to read it to you again. Rings of Power actor Lloyd Owen Tolkien says Tolkien fleshed out the hasn't fleshed out these characters to the extent that uh, the other characters are. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power actor Lloyd Owen, who plays Lindell in the upcoming Ring of Prime video series recently claimed that the author J.R.R. Tolkien did not fully flesh out his character and others as much as he did characters in The Lord of the Rings. Okay. So we are on um, for those of us who are Tolkien fans, whether it be the books or the either the Peter Jackson movies, or possibly even both, uh, we all automatically already know that that's absolutely false okay it's foolish because of the fact that a elendil has from is a major part in tolkien's works exclusively the Silmarillion. okay and also part in also is beginning of the lord of the rings but the problem is um <sighs> This is getting me dizzy. Like th this is really mind boggling. Like, what do you actually mean? It's like he do, he's it's like he he knows he thinks he knows a character better than Tolkien himself, and Tolkien created him. Like, what is going on, Mister Owen? Like, seriously. So Owen spoke to CBC, of course. CBC telling the outlet the exciting part for me is that there are these sign posts on the excuse me, on the way that Tolkien has written but he hasn't fully fleshed out these characters to the extent that the other characters are in the Lord of the Rings books okay so he also continued that so just being given the opportunity to begin to imagine what he might be like personally what he might sound like okay so it's like he also added that he's how excited he is about the character and where it goes because he has to get to um miller earth at some point perhaps we think and forge the last alliance of elves and men so the journey arc is an exciting one to go on now it's either this dude is ignorant or he's either ignorant or he's just plain dumb Okay, so oh, says the same thing in the article, but yeah, he, well, no, not dumb part, but he's either ignorant or he's outright lying in order to help promote the show. I, I, I say, I say both, I, I, I honestly say both because he could be both ignorant as well at the same time trying to pander to the Tolkien fans who's read the books and everything just trying to get them to watch the show because they hit, they've they heard all the outcry they've heard all the backlash they received all the backlash from the Tolkien fans who actually um who actually uh, paid attention to the books the letters as well as the movies even those who watch on um different channels the different Tolkien um lore videos that's on YouTube okay and it's like Man, yo, like th the pandering is strong with them, like seriously, but they're not winning, okay? And so it says here that Elendu is incredibly fleshed out as a character, and his story is quite detailed by Tolkien in the Silmarillion. Hello, showrunners, actors, actresses, Prime Amazon Prime. Do y'all even, did y'all even um, take the time out to actually get, go, go through the books or at least read them and everything? Just to figure, to see like how it all goes? Like, my good. And I know some of y'all out there like, well, the the grandson, Simon Tolkien, he, he approves, of course he approves of, he doesn't like his work. He doesn't like his grandfather's work. He didn't even like the Lord of the Rings movies. But done by Peter Jackson, he said that they're too faithful to the books. So that shows you that he don't really like the books right there. 
And it goes on to say that Elendil is, a, is first mentioned as the son of Amendil and the father of Isildur and, excuse me, Anarion. Tolkien watches Amendil and Elendil were great <laughs> ship captains and they were of the line of Elros. Tar Miniature. Tar Miniature. Thank you. Though not the ruling house to whom belong the crown and the throne in the city of Armandos. Armandia was actually an advisor to Arpharazon, the king of Numenor, before the, he came under the way of Sauron and was su um, summarily dismissed. And after being dismissed, Armandia and his family were withdrawn to the city of Romania. So let me break this down for y'all at Amazon. Rings of Power. It's going to be two, it's two factions on Numenor when Sauron is there becoming an advisor to Arpharazon. You got the faithful and you got those who are loyal to um, Arpharazon and Sauron who are given over um, to the worship of Morgoth. Okay? This is not how... Woo! Moving on. Moving on. After Arpharazon's plans to challenge the Valinor became known as on known to Armandil, he set off with three of his aides in order to seek out Manwe in the hopes that he could in intervene and save men from the um from the machinations of S Sauron. Machinations of Sauron, I mean. But here's the thing though, when he did that, he he was never heard from again. He was never heard from again because men are not were not allowed to go to Valinor. The only man that was able to go to Valinor is Tor. T-O-U-R. Tor. Because of his feats that he did back in Middle Earth and his sacrifices. He's the only man that was able to go to Valinor. And no man can step foot onto Valinor because otherwise something bad going to happen to him. And it says here, but however, before he left, he told his son to prepare to leave Numenor and gather the faithful to depart to the de depart the kingdom. And Elendil followed his father's advice as Tolkien wrote. Elendil did all that his father had bidden, and his ships lay off the east coast of the land, and the faithful put aboard their wives and their children and their heirlooms and great store of goods. So it goes on to say that Elendil and his family would be spared death and destruction from um, reshaping the reshaping of the world when Ar Ar Arpharazon and his Numenorean fleet, who they become known as the Black Numen no Numenorean fleet, were utterly destroyed by Iluvatar when they landed on the shores of Valinor. Tolkien Vobel, whether you or no, know, it were that. On Mandil came indeed to Valinor and Manwe hearkened to his prayer, but by grace of the Valar, Elendil and his sons and their people were spared from the ruin of that day. So this is telling us what actually happened. How big of a, 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 a character, how much of a character Elendil is. How big it was in the in um the Cimmerillion, but just not as much in the um the Lord of the Rings books, but the issue is then this is not go going into the novels of the Lord of the Rings. This is from the Silmarillion, okay? They're, this whole thing is just the, the whole show. The series itself is they say it's supposed to take place from the um the the, the appendices of the novel. Okay, so they, what they're doing right now is that they're only talking about the Rings of Power. That's it, but. The, the book itself, Fellowship of the Ring, only gave, go briefly over what was happening at, the, at that time during, at the end of Second Age. All right. And they're going, and it's like, do, do they even have the rights to the Silmarillion? Like, that's what I want to know. I guarantee you they don't. So it says here, Elendil and, Elendil and his sons will survive the cataclysm aboard, the nine, sh aboard nine ships and eventually found Four kingdoms in Middle Earth. Tolkien wrote, Elendil was cast up by the waves in the land of Linden, and he was befriended by Gilgal Gilgalad. Thence he passed up the river. Excuse me. Loon and 
Beyond Arid Luin, he established his realm. He and his people dwelt in many places in Eridor, about the courses of the Loon and the Baraduin, but his chief city was Anominus beside the water of Lake Nenuel. Okay, so it goes on. So this is telling us how big of a character, how big of a player that um Elinda is to the story. This part that he's talking about and everything, he claims that you know he he's he, this is his chance to go ahead and give um Elinda what the like show him him what the, he how he think the character is. He, this is his chance to show us who, who he think Elinda is, how he is, how he sounds everything instead of just simply going ahead and reading books also whose idea was to get the um story from most some of the story out of the um some really in i could have sworn they don't have the rights to it i mean it, like i said before this is fan fiction it's fan fiction and among the treasures that elendil and survivor numenorians brought to middle earth were the seeing stones or the palantiri there were seven in total, and Elinda took three of them. He set them in towers of Emin buried and upon Amon Sol, and in the city of Anuimius. Anuminus, excuse me, Anuminus. Okay. And it, <clears throat> so it also goes in detail further, like of what um would Emlimbia do, which was that he would gaze out over the surrounding areas in the tower of Emmenberade, and when the um yearning of exile was upon him, and it is it is believed that thus he would at while see far away even the tower of Avonia upon Erisea, where the master stone abode and yet abide. So these Palantir, like the one that um Galadriel was um, shown in the um trailer, the Seeing Stones, yeah, that was uh, that was scattered throughout uh, Middle Earth as well as one as well as um on Numenor. But the thing is, Galadriel, she 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 wasn't on Numenor. She didn't even come in presence of uh, uh the um Palantir. Okay, in in the, in the books. So now this is this is just basically fan fiction, just to get those who aren't even familiar with the works to go ahead and get them to watch it. All right. So back to the um actor itself. It says here that um, as Owen alludes to. Elendil plays a significant role in the last alliance and of elves and men. Yeah, he, he does. He he uh he dies. Following many years after their fight from flight from Numenor, Sauron would reveal he had survived the destruction and let his presence be known as he rekindled the forges of Mount at Mount Dune and eventually led his forces against Menas Ithil, taking the city and destroying the white tree of Isildur. Yeah, yeah. Elendil will create the last alliance with Gilgalad where they marched east to Middle Earth, gathering a great host of elves and men. They would lead their army against Sauron and face him on the battle plain that lay before the gate of the Black Land. Okay, so it's still going into detail about what happened during that War of the Last Alliance, where Gilgalad and Elendil both die and um, the sword of Lindel broke under him as he fell, but then Sauron was also thrown down, and then he was hit with the shard of Narsil. Isidor cut the ruling ring from the hand of Sauron and took it as his own. And we all know what happened after that. He kept on holding on to it instead of going ahead and going to Mount Doom and burning it to destroy the ring. All right. So Tolkien would not only detail the story of Lindel and Silmarillion, but he would also provide it to the Milton Waldman in Waldman in letter 131 that he wrote to him in 1951. He wrote that Elinda was 
a Noah Shane figure who has held off, who was held off from the rebellion and kept ships, men and furnished off the East coast of Numenor faces before the overwhelming storm of the wrath of the West and is born high upon the towering waves that bring ruin to the West of the middle earth. He and his folk are cast away as exiles upon the shores. Token continued. There they established the Numenorean kingdoms of Arnor in the north and close to the realm of Gilgalad and Gondor about the mouths of the Anduin further south. All right. So it goes on in details about letter 154 where um, he um, explained to Naomi Mitchison about um the faithful the small faithful property took no part in the attempt to seize the world power and immortality by force and they escaped the drowning of Numenor okay and then letter 156 we talked about the same thing with the um with the with the faith faithful so it says so ended with Atl Numenor Atlantis and it's all his glory but in the kind Noah chain situation in the small party of the faithful of in Numenor who have refused to take plan in rebellion through though many of them have been sacrificed in the temple by the Sauronians who they were there was um human sacrifice done to um as a worship to um Morgoth who is still at this time in the void all right, which put it into the first age. Okay, so it's like basically, long story short, Elendil's role was huge, really big already in the books. It's just, it wasn't, it's just that he just wanted to hit and just say that, you know, okay. His 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 um story is not that big, and I'm gonna step in and tell him my way. That's what he's basically saying. Or the way that the, the showrunners want us to do it. And I'm going to put my own little twist on it instead of going to the Silver really and reading it for himself. Also, get um Galadriel. Her and her brothers and everything coming over to Middle Earth, first age, Silmarillion. I mean, I mean, what is 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 really self-explanatory right there. Like seriously. This and they're wondering why people who and they often claim that they often they often say that people who read the books should have an open mind and everything. And if not, then they should just read the book. That's what Galadriel said in the interview. Matter of fact, I'm going to find that interview and I'm going to share it tomorrow in um tomorrow's broadcast. All right, but until then, if you enjoy the content that I share with you all, please let me know in the comments and also smash that like button on this video and share this video everywhere on social media. Also, anywhere that I went wrong about the things that were discussed in this video, video, please let me know in the comments below. And also, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and also click the bell notification so that way you'll be notified of future uploads. Until then, peace.